G'day fellas and welcome back to another different game video that we've got today. We have got Crossfire Legion. That is exactly what we're looking at. So it comes from the same community as Crossfire X or the same, what's the word, universe as Crossfire X. You might be aware of that game. It's a really big game in Southeast Asia. It's an RTS game. Uh, oh, sorry. It's a, an FPS game, but this game is RTS. So... I'm incredibly excited about this game. I want to show you guys exactly why that is. It's a little bit of everything, and that's kind of weird, but at the same time, it's pretty cool. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So first thing is first, uh, you got some maps in here. This map actually reminds me so much of The Hunters. If you've ever played StarCraft 1, the original, it is so much like that original map. Uh, but uh, when you're not going to see that today. You'll have to check out some other content, some other videos. We're going to be playing on, uh, on Typhoon, uh, I think it's called. Let me double check. Yeah, Typhoon. Okay, so they've got three different factions, three different civilizations. Global Risk, New Horizon, Blacklist. Now, the one that I've fallen in, lo in love with is New Horizon. If you've ever played StarCraft and you're familiar with the Protoss, they remind me of that. They are very, they're technology based and they've got a lot of similar units. They've got, as an example, one of the units that you can get is the, uh, the Vampire, which is this guy right here. And he reminds me a lot of the Zealot uh, in, in uh, StarCraft, StarCraft 2. Now, one of the things to note, you might see these here. You've got Loadout, and you might be wondering, what the heck is that all about, Drongo? Well, if you've ever played Age of Empires 3, you'll be familiar with this concept called the deck. And basically, you can start the game with a whole suite of different options. And you can choose what you want. Do you want to go with this? Do you want to go with that? And, that's going to, and it's going to enable you to change the way that you play. So as an example... I, don't, I haven't unlocked any new cards uh, to equip for my deck at this stage or for my loadout. So I've just got, I'm just running what the default is, but you can see I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here like Titans and tanks. And these are actual units in the game that you're going to be able to create. So if you don't take the Titan uh, loadout or the Titan card in your loadout, you're not going to be able to use it. So that's really important. But anyway, let's get into the game. We'll talk a little bit more about this afterwards as well. We can get back into it. Um, but uh, the AI system... Seems very, very competent at this point in time. Um, but uh, yeah, all right, well, let's do it. A big shout out goes out to Prime Matter, who are the publishers for this game. So I'm going to be walking you guys through a game that I played earlier. Confirm. So starting off, you've got what looks Location. like your standard Head. command Head. center, Initiate your town center, that launch. sort of stuff. That's called your Confirm. core base. Uh, you'll be very familiar with the resources Unable in the top right hand corner. If you've ever played StarCraft, it Confirm. is very similar to that. You've got what are known as your materials, and then you've got your fuel or your gas, uh, that old, old fashion thing you've also got population so you can see i'm comply. dropping down what Get you would know as a house uh so it's a power node um and very similar uh to the uh, protoss in starcraft if you've ever played the protoss in starcraft you'll be familiar with how your units don't actually build the um they don't actually build Confirm. the buildings they just simply put down the foundations for it and then they can go back and do whatever they want to do uh so now you can see uh, the build order so essentially Confirm. i've got 10 guys on the uh the materials one guy on the fuel Confirm. then bring out my Confirm. next guy this guy's going to put down at the front of my base here a barracks uh, and this is going to enable me to train infantry get things rolling and then he's going to go out and scout out for my enemy this is a four player map so he could be in one of four positions so it will have to be you know keeping an eye out for that so then i'm going to be also saturating my fuel or my gas as well you can see right there it kind of when i saw this it reminded me you know those um the robot wars that <laughs> that uh, they, they used to be on tv all the time i don't know what's happened to them but they, they used to be like these ones that flip Industry and I, I just i was like it just kind of reminded me of that like it looks like it gets under and just flips but anyway so now i'm constructing uh what reminds me of a zealot so it's it's called a vampire um and keep in mind that th there's no sort of mechanics with regard to um uh sort of a, a base and there being like any sort of power supply so here i am i'm actually just scouting out the enemy uh, but like if you want to go to a like a forward proxy base or something like that you don't need to drop down a pylon first or, or what would be you know previously known as a pylon um, and so now you can see i'm holding position on my vampire in the front of the base i'm not going to be able to get or nothing's going to be able to move in between here uh, and the front of the base i'm not sure if i actually demonstrate that but i can assure you that bad boy is blocked off uh, so no one's going to be getting behind there now, bringing in another element of StarCraft 
it is the Zerg. So you can see over the top of my uh, over the top of my command center, I, I guess it's probably uh, what you could call it. You can see that there's a two uh, going on at the moment. Uh, if if we go back up there, and I'm demonstrating uh, just a, a the dash that we've got. So the the Zealot has a dash. Uh, you see that little two that's there. That's basically like going to Lair Tech uh, if you ever play the Zerg and. It enables you to get access to a whole bunch of units. Um, so in, you know, it, the old way it used to work was, you know, you'd have a barracks and then you could build your factory and then you could build your starport. Not the case here. you got to get to your lair tech. Now you can see I'm actually doing a proxy factory. And that's because I've got like this whole little strategy in mind. I'm scouting out to see if my enemy is going to be doing a fast expand. Um, and I'm just using my uh, worker to do that. But uh, essentially I've got a, a nice little hidden uh, proxy. And at the same time, I'm hiding my vampires that are back here. Uh, so just to talk a little bit about um, th this civilization in particular, so it's got access to shields, um, and one of the things that it has with its um, with its houses, so the way that it puts it down, so you can see the one right there next to the command center, I put one down at the front as well, is that it actually repairs the shields of your existing units that are nearby, and it will repair them up. So it gives it's got energy, uh, and over time uh, it will you know regenerate. You can see it's represented by purple. So now we've got some uh, soldiers, some enemy soldiers beginning. to to move in and I'm not even worried about that uh, just simply because I know that I'm going to get repaired up on the front line you can see it getting repaired right now there's five soldiers shooting at that bad boy I'm not fussed at all uh, and uh, I'm just healing up and now I'm going to begin using my uh, I was going to say my zealots my vampires and you can see they've got such beautiful animations on them using that charge I absolutely love it um, the, the fact that it is uh, it, it's a little bit different. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Red Alert as well, in that th there used to be a mechanic uh, for the Sickle, uh, which was a unit that the Russians could make, and basically it enabled them to do the same thing. It was a dash, it was a jump, a leap, uh, except they could go over walls and that sort of stuff. Um, and it, it, it allow allows you to engage and it allows you to disengage. So really, really, uh, it, it, that's part of the reason why I, I fell in love with this civilization. So now I scout my enemies doing a fast expansion. And I've got out a forward um, factory here with the Orion. This is a support vehicle. Uh, so earlier I mentioned about um, how the... I, I think they're called fuel depots. I'm not sure exactly, but the houses, how they repair. So this guy does the same thing, except he does it for the actual health of the unit uh, and not the shields of the unit. So the shields, I think they regenerate slowly, um, but the health doesn't regenerate unless you've actually got one of those bad boys. So now you can see I'm actually dropping these guys out on the front line as well. So the, these are my houses and I'm dropping them on the front line because... I know they're going to be able to support my units. I see my enemy dropping down a rally point, so I'm dropping down a null field. This is one of a special ability that I've got because of the commander that I chose. And essentially, it means that in that AoE, I'm going to take less damage from the enemy. You can see it's a very short um, cooldown. But essentially, if you've ever played Red Alert, uh, I think maybe any of the Red Alerts, but Red Alert 3 in particular comes to mind. You have these sort of like hero spells or caster spells. I think Age of Mythology is also a, a similar game to that, uh, that are these big sort of game-changing spells. Um, and they're on, you know, varying amounts of cooldown. Uh, so you've got to be careful with your usage. Um, but uh, now I'm continuing to attack with my vampires. Now, one of the reasons why these guys are called vampires is because they've actually got an upgrade that enables them to lifesteal. So as they're attacking the enemy, they begin healing themselves back. And you can see we, we have researched that technology now. So it means that we are going to be healing up. And at the same time, we've got our Orion, the support unit, on the back line there, helping out and uh, and sort of lending a hand. You can see the enemy kind of looks a little bit more like a Terran base. Um, and it looks like we're kind of eating up the Marines. Um, but you've got to be careful of pushing in. So you'll be familiar with, like, um, in, in StarCraft, the town center, or the, the command center, rather, it doesn't really have a lot going for it in the way of defensive capability. Whereas in this game, things are very different. In Crossfire Legion, your town center, your command center, it actually offers a healing aura around it. So it means that if you try and if you put your enemies uh, or you put your units inside that, it's going to reduce it. Now, welcome to the game with the Titan right there. So this is what the strategy is all about. So you can see we're quite early into this game. I think we're like seven minutes into this game. And I theorized, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to throw together a crazy build order. I'm going to see how fast I can get one of these bad boys out on the field. 
Now, you got to watch out. These guys do have friendly damage. My zealots are... Well, my, my vampires are about to get fucked up. You can see it right there. Oh, man. They they lose about 50% of their health, but fortunately, I've got the Orion there. It's going to heal it back up. But look how much damage comes out against that. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to show you, but uh, I, assure, I assure you all the marines up to the north are dead. So, talking about the mechanics of this game, I honestly felt it was very fluid, and... I was, I, I'm like, I'm genuinely impressed at how good this felt. At, when I first came in, the civilization, the faction that I played, it kind of felt like a bit of a Terran clone. Uh, it, almost down to the fact that, like, they've got uh, Stim. It's not called Stim. But then I started to see these variations. To me, this really feels like they've gone in incredibly, um, incredibly inspired by StarCraft. And they've used it almost as a base. However, they've gone and then they've iterated and slowly over time. So you can definitely see that there are elements of StarCraft in this game. Even, you know, if you were to go as, as, as basic as their resources or the fact that you've got Marines on one civilizational faction and then you've got Zealots on, on the secondary. But then it really starts to vary. And there is a huge variation in, in just so many different aspects of it. And the big thing for me really comes down to uh, those cards that I was mentioning earlier uh, in your deck. Because this game is a very fast-paced game. And it turns out you don't actually have to choose to have the vampire. If you don't want to play with vampires, that's fine. Just don't even don't even include them in your loadout. Uh, but for me, I think it's, it's going to be pretty standard. But it's going to enable you a lot of different options when you're coming into this game. Because you've got vehicles, as you can see. I've got my big boy on the screen at the moment. You've got infantry, my vampires, which are absolutely just going ham. And then you've also got aircraft as well. So you, you will notice similarities and, you know, StarCraft is definitely the biggest inspiration here, but I do see them drawing from Red Alert. I see them drawing from Command and Conquer. I see them drawing from Age of Empires 3. And I genuinely feel like at the moment in the RTS space, there is no room for us to be like, I'm not going to play it because, you know, they stole this or they did that. As, as far as I'm aware, like, we, we need all the help that we can get. And if we've got people out here that are willing to you know, come in and put their passion. I'm incredibly excited for that because, you know, I was actually saying to my partner earlier, I'm like, hey, like, I'm playing this game and it's actually really fun. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it, but I'm actually loving it. It's awesome. And now you can see that the enemy is dropping down a fire at will. So they're, they're sort of like nuking me, I guess, or, or artillery shooting me. Um, but uh, I'm trying my best to avoid it. I've got a couple of vampires getting in close. Um, but uh, that's essentially it uh, for the gameplay that you're going to be seeing for this video you can see that uh victory has now been claimed and uh i mean let's talk a little bit more about this game all right so before we get into sort of more of a deep dive analysis the first thing i, I want to sort of just get out of the way and is start by saying that um you know I i've been paid to talk about this game uh but at the same time i do not want to let uh that in any way cloud my uh impartiality when it comes to the rev not not the review of this game, but my opinion of the game. Uh, because I think irrespective of that, I still probably would have covered this game, and I think I still probably would have enjoyed it just as much. Uh, it's incredibly fast-paced. One of the things that I noticed was you're getting into fights incredibly quickly. Uh, and I like that a lot. The fact that I, like, we're, what, seven minutes through the game and I've already got my giant titan out? Like, that's a good sign. The fact that I was able to tech up that quickly, get to that level, uh, and to me, that, that's the sign of a promising future, at least the, the sign of a promising meta, uh, the, the way that you're able to do that, because it means that you're going to have a lot of strategic options open to you. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is going to be, this game is going to be free to play. So when it comes to, you know, the sort of community that it's going to have, I suspect it's probably going to be quite large. Um, I know that with regard to Crossfire itself, that there is a huge community in that. Uh, obviously that's an FPS game, but obviously they're in the same universe. So it means that people might be uh, interested in it, but I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if in a year's time or two years time, this is the biggest RTS there is out. I really would not be surprised. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of longevity in it. Like, so uh, as an example, like we head back into the, um, the lobby browser, we'll just take a, another look. I, I think with the fact that you're able to customize your loadout. So I played a game, Age of Empires 3. That's where I started my YouTube channel was Age of Empires 3, and they had this exact same system. Uh, it was called a deck system, um, in, and these are cards. And basically, you can just, you know, 
slot in, slot out, whatever you want or whatever you think is going to be good on the map. As an example, you might be playing on a map where air isn't that good. Well, why do you need to have a morning star? Why do you need to have a javelin if you don't think air is going to be that good? Maybe there's big mountains and you can't go past it. So, you know, get, get those out of the deck. Let's get a couple more vehicles in there. Um, and so it, it's customization like that that I, th I think is really uh, going to help out a lot. But I mean, other than that, I'm, I'm keen to hear what you guys think about the game, whether you'd like to see more videos from it, because I tell you what, I had a lot of fun playing this. I had a lot of fun exploring it. You guys know uh, I'm a bit of a min-maxer when it comes to games like this. I love to just immediately go into the game, try and break it, try and find the most overpowered, busted thing that I could. Uh, and that, that's why I, um, yeah, I mean, th that's why I just sort of came into the game. And you could probably see I was a little bit hardcore with all my timings. If you're looking at the resources, you can see it never really goes above, say, you know, 100 or 200 unless I need it to. Uh, but other than that, I'm curious to know what you guys think. But uh, thank you for watching the video and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.